God. <clears throat> I guess I should be thankful this season changed. Leaves go from green to orange to beige. Friendship, friendship. Hey, what's going on, everyone? We have another episode of Game Time Excellence, where we talk about your mission, mindset, mastery, and maintenance. Today, we have another special guest. Her name is Camille Buxita. Uh, she lives currently in New York. Her favorite food is grilled cheese with heavy butter. And she is the head of women's basketball at SLAM. So uh, for the people that don't know who you are, that should know who you are, can you let them know a little bit about you? Uh, I don't know if anyone's supposed to know me by any means, <laughs> but uh, thank you for having me, first of all. Um, yeah, so I am currently uh, the head of women's basketball content and strategy at mm-hmm. Slam Media. Uh, I've kind of been doing this for almost two years now with this company and have worked around the league and or the around the game of basketball for the past almost five years now. Um, kind of doing what I can. And I've been here in New York in those five years. It's kind of crazy to think that it's been five years, but oh, wow. guys, when you're having yeah. when you're having a, a blast doing right, like right. That. And so, yeah, I was born in Puerto Rico, raised in Florida, um, and made the move up to New York here about five years ago. Oh, nice, nice. And another fun fact that you told me, you know, uh, earlier today was your dad plays for uh, the Puerto Rican team or Puerto Rico team uh, for basketball. So you kind of had like a a long history uh, with uh, basketball. Is that correct? Yeah, my dad played for the national team. I mean, I'm not going to date him, so I'm not going to say <laughs> years because I know he'll maybe find this. And I actually, I don't know. He doesn't know how to work technology. He probably right, won't right. Know. But you should, you're uh, going to send it to him, though. You got yeah, to send it to him. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. send it. To him, so I promise I won't date him. But uh, yeah, he played for the team. So when I was growing up, he's already done with his playing days. But him and I always kind of bonded over the game, breaking mm-hmm. the film, watching games, and and it was kind of always our connection. So we just it's been a part of my life basically for as long as I can remember. Right, right. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And do you, does he does he ever reminisce on some of the the old times when he when he played basketball? Oh yeah, all the time. And and the funny part is he'll especially in today's NBA or in today's even the the uh, league in Puerto Rico, he'll watch games and he'll sit there and just like talk smack and talk crap about how they're playing the game right. of basketball and how things should be done better <laughs> reminiscing is not necessarily uh how he does it he more just says oh well, back in my day this is right, how right right and how it went down and how it should be now so mm. um that's kind of always the fun part of watching games with him i got you i got you no, that makes total sense that makes total sense and so you know speaking of basketball you work in a sport that um doesn't get the coverage that i think it should but um, with what you do, you get the opportunity to get it more exposure. And so, um, you know, I did some research. I did some some digging. I wouldn't call it like stalking or anything like that. I just call it, you know, doing some research. But um, I found out that, you know, before uh, working in women's basketball at SLAM, you wanted to be a doctor. So, mm-hmm. you know, how did that come about? Yeah, pretty uh hefty transition there from my in my career but uh yeah I was my grandfather was a radiologist and he went to Harvard Medical School and Mm -hmm. I was something that I wanted to kind of follow in his footsteps of but I wanted to practice neurology and um I had interned with a couple with a neurologist in Orlando where I grew up and ended up going to Florida State to get my degree in biology so or biology Mm -hmm. Uh, go into neuroscience from a medical field standpoint Um, Mm. and about two and a half to three years in I realized I had been working at the at the with the athletic department in various capacities the entire Mm. time with the boosters um, and I was an intern in the marketing division and so uh, throughout those years I kind of realized wow you know sports maybe isn't necessarily a hobby anymore maybe it is something I should be doing as Mm. a And um, by the time I I really started thinking about this, it was a little late to necessarily change my trajectory from a degree standpoint. So I ended up graduating with a psychology degree. Mm -hmm. And I still almost did go down the psychology route, uh, but there was something in my heart that told me that my passion and my purpose really uh, 
lied in in working in sports and specifically in women's sports Mm -hmm. no that's big right there i think that's so important for a lot of uh younger people and older people just to just to follow your heart you know Mm -hmm. um a lot of times we get caught up in what's going to pay the bills and and what our family history has done and all that no just follow your heart and what's you know uh what's best for you so that's cool that you did that especially so late in the game you know yeah. <laughs> um, i know I, I think that's one thing that i tell everyone every you know little brother little sister i i hear from that's in college is don't put so much pressure on knowing exactly what you want to do the minute you go mm. in big societal pressure now to do that and now i have friends you know, five years into their professional careers, realizing, wow, I really don't like what I do. And I, right. and I think about what I do and, and having to reevaluate what their next step is going to be. And mm. not that there's anything wrong with that. I, I think it's just, don't put that pressure early on in college or even when you graduate, because other then you're going to maybe end up in something that necessarily isn't for you. It's, right. it's all time at a time. Mm-hmm. No, that, that's really big right there. And that, that's, I wish uh, in school, they allowed you, okay, say you wanted to become a doctor. In high school, they allowed you to take a visit and shadow, you know, a week at a doctor's mm-hmm. facility. And maybe like you figure out, okay, maybe that's not for me or that is for me. So you can get more exposure, um, you know, during that period of time rather than not getting any exposure. And then you're three years into college or four years into college or you're in the residency. And then you finally feel yeah. like, oh, that's not what I want to do now. So. Yeah, and I think there just needs to be a, a level of a shift in mindset, which I think has already happened just because mm-hmm. of technology and everything that we have available to us resource-wise, but right. uh, <laughs> traditional routes aren't for everyone. It, not everyone's going to be a lawyer, a business owner, or mm-hmm. a doctor. There are other methods to, uh, I would say, make a living and, and also enjoy it while you're doing it. Right, right. Yeah. So I think that's just, I mean, we're already experiencing that shift in mindset, but mm-hmm. it's just, I hope everyone remembers. Right. No, hundred percent. And so, you know, sticking with, you know, your transition. So you went from, you know, wanting to be a doctor saving the world to now uh, uh, being an instrumental piece and in helping women's basketball grow. Uh, so what's your mission as far as that, you know, what's your mission to, to, to do what you're doing now? Yeah. And, it's funny. I mean, I, I'm not by any means uh, wanting to discount women's basketball. But to me, it's always about uplifting women and what mm-hmm. can we do to uh, make their voices heard, understood, mm-hmm. and, and appreciated, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. It's something I grew up, I was raised in a family it, it, all by women. It was me, my grandmother, my mom, my aunts. We were all single women, um, single mothers um, mm-hmm. I was raised by. So it's always something that I've, I've seen. And, and these people are the heroes to me, the people that raised me. Mm. And it's something that, you know, we don't see well more enough of in society that these athletes that are women are, are doing so many other things, raising children, having, giving birth mm. businesses because they have to, because their sports don't pay them what they need. Right. Um, right. To show the level of, of I don't want to say superiority but these women are superheroes and mm. so again that's kind of what my mission has always been to do is to highlight that and tell their stories mm. I love that I love that and I think storytelling is such a big part of like life you know what I mean so the fact that you're like a, a piece of that is, is so cool to me because you know look at movies we we're attracted to movies because of the story we're attracted to brands because of the story we're attracted to you know uh uh the uh national football games because of the underdog or the the person that's supposed to win you know go 17 and 0 because of the story so that's really cool that you're able to do that and you know my question to you is why do you think uh specifically women's basketball doesn't get the coverage that that it deserves i think it's a level of investment from the people in decision making positions Mm -hmm. uh or lack thereof, I would say it's investment from those people. It's understand, I mean, the way companies work these days, it's they go where demand is as opposed to investing and developing a demand mm-hmm. uh, kind of backwards. Mm-hmm. So I think there is a really big uh, missed opportunity and gap mm-hmm. in, in what these uh, stakeholders are deciding. Mm-hmm. 
because they they personally don't see the the value in what these women and this, these games have. Mm. Um, and there's something to be said about the fact that so many of the companies in these key decision stakeholder positions um, are not diversified. They're not, they're, I mean, there's only a percentage of them that are women mm. and there's uh, very little representation of all ethnicities, races, and age, and age groups. Uh, mm. That's a big issue. Not only just talking about um, people of color or women, you're talking about ages. I, mm. I, I another problem where people in these because they've been doing it for the past 20 years in my opinion the i would say the the sport and the the media and the i would say tech everything's outgrown them they, right, they okay. no longer i would in my opinion um be subject objective and understanding that the decisions they're making holistically they didn't grow up in what we grew up in mm -hmm. so there's a level of diversity that needs to be uh, implemented at those at those key decision making. Mm, right, right, right. No, I love that. I love that. And, and on top of it, too, I think the, the stigma of women's basketball needs to change because when you hear about women's basketball, oh, it's slow, it's boring. You know, what I mean, there's not like anything exciting about it. But if you actually sit down and watch a women's basketball game, you're like, oh, they got some skill. They, you know, what I mean, not some skill. They have obviously have to have like a high level of skill to play at that level. But there is excitement to it. There is a, um, a, a high level of basketball IQ, IQ going on out there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if the stigma can change to around that, I think that that would invite more people to, to watch, but you know, like what you said, you also do need more exposure for that to happen too. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's, I mean, you bring up a, a really good point. Um, there's this mindset because it's something that people have just never tried. Right. They don't understand it and they watch one game and they think they get it. And if right. you any true basketball fan purist mm -hmm. someone that loves the game itself mm -hmm. uh, they'll tell you that they learn from w women the women's basketball and WNBA players because they play it at a true team level as mm -hmm. opposed to the nba counterpart where it's really about these stars going 1v1 or 2v2 and iso plays right right there's a different style of play and I understand, but you have to appreciate it for what it is as opposed to comparing it mm. to what it's against. Uh, I think that's a, a, ch a shift in mindset that needs to happen from a societal level and also from the same decision key stake uh, decision makers that would make the, the calls to say, hey, this should be aired or this shouldn't. Right, right. No, I love that. I love that. And as far as like your mindset, you know what I mean? Like uh, I'm pretty sure you've been through some uh, some hard times where, you know, maybe you're, you're, you've been overwhelmed or anxious or, um, um, or you, you know, you bounce back. So, you know, how have you been able to maintain a strong mindset, especially with, uh, what's going on too, as far as like COVID and, and all that, how, how, how have you been able to maintain a strong mindset? Yeah, I think, um, I've, I've fallen prey to, unfortunately, uh, being the type that gets a little pressured by, society and what maybe what the what i'm i i fear that people will think or view or it's like oh why is you know this the direction they're going and mm. why not this direction and and i think the big and i'm still learning I, i'm not by any means achieved right, right. <laughs> the level of mindset i want i think the thing that i i keep trying to tell myself is that you know i'm in this position for a reason i've i've earned mm. my my way here and i put in the work and um, my and the vision that I have is my own and no one else can take that away from me mm -hmm. trying to really pray you know pray myself into that and really uh, not only repeat it to myself but really believe it mm -hmm. um, and that hopefully has allowed me to really let go of that that mm -hmm. fear in the end to me I, I personally and I know to many people fear is the one thing that holds them back the most from achieving what they can mm -hmm. And so that's definitely something that I try to I really pray on, think on, and and meditate on on a daily basis. Right, right. No, I love that. I love that. Especially you said something um, that's you know is, is very key is like belief, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that on top of that, not only do you need to have belief, but you need to have conviction, mm -hmm. you know. And, and um, that's cool that you know you've been able to uh, battle with that and get to the place where you are now. And so. 
uh, not only do you have to have a, the mindset, but in order to get where you are now, you have to master your skill. Uh, mm-hmm. So you went from wanting to be a doctor, change your major to psychology, to becoming uh, a storyteller. So how have you been able to master that skill to get to this place now? Well, I definitely don't think I'm a master by any means. I am really, if you really want to, I'm only on year five. And so I take so many more years to master. I I hope to one day achieve that level. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning so much from the people around me, the people, my colleagues. Mm -hmm. And so I guess one of the biggest things I've done that I would say has allowed me to grow the most towards that level Mm -hmm. of mastering um, is learning from... and this is kind of where I struggle too. It's a struggle for me, but I, I, I where I've learned the mm. most is being more solution focused. Mm, at all okay. I think myself included, get people get stuck on, um, you know, why did this happen? Why did X, Y, Z happen? Why did this, mm. you know, why wasn't this done this way? Mm. Why wasn't the story told this way? Well, we could have done better. You know, let's not think that way. Let's start thinking forward. Let's start thinking future or forward thinking. Exactly. Sorry. Mm. Um, that it's always about, you know, okay, here's how I'm going to do it next time. It's right, not right. about let's go back and revisit. It's more about this is what I'm going to do next time. Mm. I think it's something that I still am learning and trying to apply. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's one of the basic, biggest things that I've, I've kept that close and dear to me. That's helped me master my, my current, not master, help me get to a level of mastering my current. Uh-huh. Um, I would say another thing is, um, I'm really always inspired by others. And so uh, I have a constant feed of other creators and mm-hmm. other storytellers and, and and across sports, across music, across film that I try to um, lean on and, and view and understand and really get to understand their perspective. Mm, right, right. How, um, each one develops their unique view, vision, because I think that's still something that I'm still trying to develop. I don't mm-hmm. think my, my, my own vision's perfectly fine um, you know fine-tuned I want to mm-hmm. do more um, you know maintenance and tweaking and everything as I continue to to go right. down my professional path mm-hmm. um, but that's always something that I like to do I really love looking towards others and and really just kind of being inspired by their vision mm-hmm. no I love that I love that and I love the fact that that you're so hesitant to say like I haven't mastered this because that just shows like you you will be a, a lifetime a, a lifetime learner you know, mm-hmm. I think that's what it's about. If you look at any person, I mean, look, look at, you know, rest in peace, Kobe, but mm-hmm. uh, he was a lifetime learner, you know, yeah. even like uh, how great he was. He was always trying to learn. Um, he, I remember watching a video where he went to go practice with Hakeem Olajuwon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, and that was, I think that was like year, it had to be like year 10, year, year 11, somewhere around there. And he was still trying to work and get better on his post game. And so, uh, just listening and I to think you. That's one of the most beautiful things about him too is um, he could have left his career and left basketball, and that was that. Mm-hmm. He actively to learn an entirely new game in itself and become the master of that. Right. Uh, so if, if there's another lesson to be taught in 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 the mem- in the memory of Kobe Bryant is that he was someone that was constantly inspired to learn something else because that something else could add value to his life. Right. Um, in, in, in the relationship he had with his daughter. Right. So there's something really, uh, I would say, inspiring in that message that I think since his passing, I've, I've really tried to keep top of mind at all times is that mm. learning never stops. And if the minute it stops is the minute you stop growing and it's the minute right. you stop becoming as a, a success or not even a success, but a, a better person is right. to say it. So yeah, yeah. definitely something I try to remember. Yeah, no, 100 percent. You know, uh, you know, from playing in the NFL, I, I would always hear coaches say, you know, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So, mm-hmm. you know, what are you doing on a daily basis to grow? And um, that's what I hear from you. You know, you're always trying to grow. So that's like really cool to hear. Uh, and then the, the last M, maintenance. And I mm-hmm. truly believe this is something that people uh, forget to do, you know, whether because you know, the hustle and bustle of life, uh, maybe kids, maybe a relationship, maybe just, um, you don't think it's a priority, but, um, you know, one thing I like to do is I like to journal. I like to meditate. I like to take once a week to like reflect on the week and how it went. I like to, um, I have a rule for myself this year, once a week, 
I will go do something that rejuvenates me. And that's like self-care related, whether it's like a, um, a petty, um, a little uh, shoulder <laughs> massage, a yeah. walk, you know, a little something, you know. So what do you do uh, to uh, do that maintenance for yourself? Yeah, it's funny. Um, that's actually been one of my new, I, I know everyone's New Year's resolutions. It doesn't feel like a new year, but it is. And right, right. right. I, that's actually one of my new year re- resolutions is to be, uh, I would say more invested in my meditating r- routine. Mm. I think mm. that's something that I personally need to be doing on a daily b- basis as a naturally anxious person. So mm. I suffer from anxiety. It's mm. something that, you know, mid twenties brings. And so right, right. definitely something that I want to um, more incorporate more into my like, daily routine. Mm. One other big thing is exercise. I think that's mm. It's the time of day that I really put down my phone. There's nothing else other than me putting in work, mm. sweating and grinding and working on myself and, and really seeing how much I can push myself physically. Mm. Um, honestly been one of the, that I actually, I, it's funny. I, I've always worked out, it's never, but it's something that I recognize, especially via COVID, how mm. much it affects me on a mental, right. basis, on a mental, from a mental state. Mm. And it's, I can see how bad it goes when I get out of my gym routine and, and mm. I need to get back to it. So I think those are the biggest things. I want to get more fluid in my meditating routine. And then I also um, am really big into, into exercise and also a reading. I, I, mm. I forget how much reading, I don't know, just invigorates me mentally and mm. invigorates me so much that, and it's not on a phone. Anything that's away from a phone is basically what's my self-care. Right, right. Like, no, for sure. <laughs> I'm on a phone or a screen 24-7. So the minute I can put it down and not look at it and for a good amount of time, I'm, I'm a happy person. <laughs> right, right. No, for sure. I think everyone should do like some type of detox from your phone. You don't realize like, um, I remember I deleted Instagram, Twitter, yeah. uh, and some other things. And I would get on my phone just to try to like click on it. And it wasn't there. You know what I mean? You don't realize how much of a a habit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it really is something that, I mean, and I'm not meaning, there's a lot of positives from social media, but I think the, a lot of negatives for people that um, may suffer from different, you know, issues, whether it's anxiety or, or, Mm. you know, comparing yourself to what I I fall to pray to these things all the time. I, Mm. I, afraid to say it so that's why for me it's really important to put the phone away sometimes and just clear my head whatever way I can right no 100% um I posted the other day which um uh I posted the other day like what is your diet like you know and not not just about your food but Mm -hmm. what are you listening to what are you thinking what are you watching what are you reading you know what I mean because it's so important to take a um to check what you're spending your time on because what you're spending your time on becomes like who you are. And so, no, that's big that you say that. And so, um, you know, as far as, you know, your role at slam, right. Um, what is something you want to accomplish there this year to impact the game of women's basketball? Yeah, I think, um, my, and this is just, you know, out of routine, my, my job has become more of a social position, which, I love, I understand that's definitely one one part of what I want to do. I want to become way more integrated in the storytelling piece. So I would love to produce a docu-series. That's a mm. goal of mine. Right, right. Uh, we have a couple ideas in the works right now that we're really trying to flesh out and and, and get produced and funded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is one of the biggest things for me is I want to be more uh, involved in the production of a docu-series of a larger storytelling piece. Mm. I got you. I got you. No, that's really cool right there. Um, what would it be about? So we have a couple thoughts in mind. I don't want to. Okay. Really yeah. Confidential. I can't tell too many secrets. <laughs> um, but, you know, I know we have a couple of good pitches in mind that we're about to start taking out to, to potential buyers and, and mm. see what we can do. And hopefully we will see one of them at some point this year. Mm, okay. Okay. Hey, everyone stay tuned. Um, <laughs> Uh, where could they find it though? Where would they, where could they like track, uh, that process of that right there? Yeah. So anything will be, uh, definitely promoted and marketed on all on W slam specifically as well as slam channels Mm -hmm. on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, every social handle you can think of Facebook. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm missing a billion, but there will be everywhere. Okay. So, um, definitely we'll be able to see any bits and pieces of production on there. Okay. Okay. And so as a person, you know, 
I would be lying if I was to say like I watch like a ton of women's basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a person who wants to support, um, so you know, one of my one of my best friends, uh, Tyler Tyler Patman, um, he's married to Tiffany Bias. Uh, oh which, no way! Yeah, so um, you know she played in the WNBA. Um, We've shot with her a couple times. I love Tiffany. She's great. Yeah, so she's you know she's an amazing person and. Um, Sorry, Tiffany. I, I need to support women's basketball a lot better than I do. But um, Sorry, I was calling himself out. <laughs> exactly. You know, so I, I got to go ahead and take ownership. But what, <laughs> what could I do to support women's basketball even more? I, I say it's a couple a couple things. One is um, try and find your local team to go buy tickets to. Obviously, mm. I'm willing. Um, right. I think that's the biggest area of help that the league needs is, is support from a literal mm physical attendance standpoint okay Uh, second part i would say is definitely following and keeping up on all social media and finding games on there because every every account that i know of highlight her over time wbb uh w slam every every outlet um Mm -hmm. promotes or or lets you know when games are happening okay Uh, and keeps you updated year round, especially because the WNBA is only a portion of the year, but these mm-hmm. women play overseas for the other portion of the year. Right. So playing year round. And so basketball is never not, is not, never not happening on the okay. women's game. So I would say definitely keeping up and following there as well as knowing when the league is premier or when is starting May 15th tentatively right now. <laughs> um, and so uh, those are the two big things. I think the third big thing in my opinion, from a longevity standpoint, is exposing your nieces, your nephews, the young Mm. generation to the WNBA, but showing them highlights, showing them full games that are sometimes available on YouTube and or league packs. Um, Just exposing the next generation of hopefully women's basketball stars, or also it doesn't need to be just young girls you're exposing the Mm -hmm. WNBA. Expo- expose your your sons, expose your nephews. I think that is where um, we can really set the WNBA up to have a long future. Mm, okay, no, I love that. I love that. So I don't think Tulsa, Oklahoma has a bas- women's basketball team, but I'm pretty sure Dallas does. Um, they had, yeah, they had one for a little bit. Tulsa, I think they did. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so Dallas, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come support. Yeah. Uh, real quick though, since you know Tiffany as well, do you have any funny stories about uh, with Tiffany or? Oh, so I think one of my favorites, I don't know if it's necessarily funny, but it was literally, I had just gotten to slam maybe like, like a month prior. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was taught, we, we hit up Tiffany and Rashonda Gray, who they Mm -hmm. played together for the Liberty. It was, it was still preseason time. It wasn't even, or maybe camps had started. It was May. So yeah, I guess season would have started by then. And we did a photo shoot in, uh, which park was it over here in Brooklyn? I think it was, uh, it wasn't Prospects, McCarran Park, maybe, mm-hmm. right? Or, oh, it's going to bug me if I get it wrong, especially because I live here. It's fine. Um, we did a photo, photo shoot and we're just like with Tiffany, like I'm walking around with a reflector, like I'm <laughs> a wall so she could change. Right, like right. a full produced photo shoot. Right. Um, in the middle of the park. And it was just such a fun day. And it was pretty funny because like, a lot of who kept having to like, I love that, but like tell kids like, hey, can we, we need this side of the court for like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, she was awesome. That was probably one of my favorite things. And she was a total boss. That girl's a model. Like, oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. Hey, we plug them right here, like hire her to do your shoots because she is just a total professional in that. Time. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's amazing. No, she's awesome. So uh, shout out to Tyler and Tiffany. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, Tiffany, I'm gonna call you after this and, and, and give, you, give you crap about that. Yeah, get your boy back watching the game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, yeah we all went to Oklahoma State. So okay. you know, that's, that's kind of how we know each other. Um, and so on on top of that, um, so we talked about how I can support and how other people can sort of support basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what I see growing uh, is mm-hmm. high school basketball, the mm-hmm. exposure and coverage of high like high school basketball, high school basketball players. There was this one girl that I think she had over like two hundred thousand followers on Instagram, but her, I think her name was like, uh, dang, that's gonna bother me too. Paige, 
Paige Backers, yeah. Yes, yes. I and mean, she who she I watched all the highlights. I was like, good lord, she's amazing. Yes, she over six hundred thousand followers <laughs> now. Excuse me. See, look yeah. at that. <laughs> He has blown up um, as well as a lot of other top um, high school talent. And I yeah. and got to give credit to outlets um, like Overtime and, and She Hoop, who was formerly She Hoops Network. Um, mm. Some of the great, I would say, um, pillars and pioneers in what I, has become now the standard for covering these high school athletes mm. uh, that are, I mean, total athletes. And it just shows you how much the game has evolved mm. since. Uh, the likes of Candace Parker and Maya right. and all these players were in high school. And, and I think there's a certain obsession of knowing who's the next great. And that's where that lies with Paige. Everyone, mm. is, you know, the eyes are on her. We had her on our slam cover. She, mm. I mean, it's just, she's got like this, such a humble mentality and is, mm. is, is, a, is hungry to learn. I think that's mm. what's so incredibly special about her. She's hungry right. to learn, but it's every high school basketball player right now. They're all mm. hungry to learn. They understand that their ceiling has not been reached. Right. And there's a level of maturity in the women's basketball, girl, women's high school basketball um, world mm -hmm. that I would say I've never seen in mm. my, I mean, in my life. I, I can't imagine me at 16, or 17 right, right. Those types of, of attention and, and, and then, but also awareness and maturity and an mm. ability to, to move the right way and have the right, there's just so much that I swear if I was in that position, you know, 10 years ago, there's no way I would have had an ounce of maturity right. that they would have, yeah, like they, yeah. they handle it so well, like total professionals and they're not even at a high school. So right. Uh, there's a lot to be said about those young girls that are really about to take this game to the next level. And I think mm -hmm. they're going to set the WNBA up for, for a lot of future success because right. everyone's going to want to see when Paige plays her first pro game. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's so big that, um, that these young student athletes are getting this exposure right now because um, you see like Zion Williamson mm -hmm. and LaMelo Ball, yeah. once they got to the, once they got to the NBA, everyone is, is highly anticipated. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so excited. So it's yep. now, you, you know, you see uh, these uh, uh, student athletes, these girls that are being covered. And now once they go to college, you know, it's, it's anticipation. Once they go to the pros, it's anticipation. So I think yep. that'll grow the game even further. Um, and so- and I have to say I'm really excited for uh, people to be able to, to, to buy a page jersey, you know, now that name likeness and whatnot, and, and these players can profit off these things will hopefully mm -hmm. in the future, in the near future. Um, it just shows that these women are marketable. It shows that they, there is a demand for them. There mm -hmm. is an audience. And so that will show brands around the world. It'll show um, owners around the, around the, around the league. Um, mm -hmm. whatnot. There is a lot to be gained from right. investing sports yeah no that's really big right there and no, i love that um and you know the the what i would go to you know what i hope for too as far as like student athletes so i run a program that's called the athlete roundtable mm -hmm. and the whole premise behind it is to help athletes maximize the game on the field or off the field i mean on the field and off the field mm -hmm. and obviously on the court or off the court one of the two um and so because there's so many things that i wish i would have known yeah. Uh, when I was playing in NFL that I didn't know. And so I'm just yeah. looking to share, you know, that information to, you know, high school athletes, college athletes, because a lot of these things aren't being shared uh, mm -hmm. when you're playing that sport and you have to learn the hard way. And yep. so I just want athletes not to um, go through that same thing. Um, but my last two questions for you, Camille, you've been amazing, uh, is this right here. This is a deep question. So, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> What is the meaning of life for you? Hmm. I don't think that's something that I've necessarily fully come to understand. I think I'm a quarter of a way through whatever a hundred years is, a quarter of a century. I just don't think that I even can begin to answer that mm. um, right now. I think what the meaning of life for me right now in this moment is is experiencing you know the love and light that the people around you bring and give mm. you and giving that back i think that's something that you know i've even had to learn too it's it's all a process it's all a growth but that's one big thing that i've i've become to i've come to appreciate so much more is just how much love and light that the people around you um, provide each one of us and so it's so important to 
to give that back and, mm -hmm. and really uh, keep it, you know, above all priorities. It, there, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter about work or career or whatever. It's, you know, who are those people and how do you love them and how do you give them light and how do you make each other better? Mm -hmm. um, right now, that's definitely the, the meaning that I, I would say value the most, but mm -hmm. it's something that's going to be ever growing for me and evolving. Right. I'll ever have one single meaning of life that I carry with me throughout. Mm. Okay. No, I love that. I love that. So I can't wait. So we're going to, we're going to hold on to this. And then when you turn, you know, 80 years old, we're going to ask you <laughs> what the meaning of life is at that exactly. point. Um, and so, okay. The, the last question for you, or I got one more after this. I'm so sorry. So uh, if you had one superpower, mm. what would you choose? I, so it's funny. This is like not necessarily for any philosophical reason. I'm kind of I love like uh, adrenaline, so I would love to fly. Like oh, I, yeah. I cliff dive. I love like oh, I wow. want to, I want to go skydiving. So I would love to be able to fly and just like see the world from above. <laughs> right, right. No, that's really cool. Yeah, I've actually went skydiving two times. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, the next time I get to jump out uh, by myself with like oh, a radio no and all that. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> not there yet <laughs> <laughs> but i'm so nervous to do that because it's different jumping out with someone yeah. on your back but yep, yep. When you're jumping out by yourself i'm like i don't know about that what if i don't even like uh, uh direct myself back to the right location i just yeah. like some trees you know? i'm getting sweating just thinking about <laughs> nervous <laughs> but you cliff dive though that's like um that's pretty scary as well yeah i mean i'm not doing like 100 foot jumps here or anything but um anytime i get an opportunity to go on a cool hike and like find somewhere in the ocean so i've done it in um in puerto rico a couple mm -hmm. times which is really fun when i'm there oh, okay okay no that's that's really cool i've never done that uh i've had a fear of water for a long period of time really? in my life. yeah and i just now so when i was playing with the miami dolphins mm -hmm. uh i jumped in the ocean th then so mm -hmm. You know, I was trying to break into fear a little bit by a yeah. little bit. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm kind of afraid to cliff dive. Cliff, yeah, cliff dive. Um, yeah, it's fair. It's not a normal thing to do. I just have grown up in the water my whole life. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Uh, okay. So I, I learned to swim before I knew how to walk. So it was just one of those things that, like, I just, from day one, you know, mm -hmm. being born on the beach in Puerto Rico, it's, you better learn how to swim in an ocean or you're not going to survive. Right, right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> So I'm I, I'm definitely gonna do it one time. We'll start off with like a baby cliff dive, you know what I mean? Like there you go. a small there you one. Go. Um, so my last question for you is this right here. As we close uh this this episode out, what is um one, what is one thing you want people to know about you? Um, and then two, uh what is something you could give to someone to help them on their journey to to help them grow or to help them just have more success in their life? Um, so one, how do you, you know, what is one thing you want people to know about you? And then two, uh, what is something you could give to someone to help them on their journey? Okay. So first, so something I want people to know about me, I don't know if, like, I want them to know, <laughs> um, I'm probably like the most awkward human being on the, like, I, I feel like it doesn't, sh I don't know, like I'm very awkward. So maybe mm -hmm. like, I always like telling people that or like showing, cause then it like makes everyone comfortable. Cause then we can just be weird and awkward together. Right, right, right. No pressure to be the certain way. No, mm -hmm. like every, I mean, listen, I've got a lot of quirks. So mm -hmm. that's always something that I try to uh, tell people. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and then one thing to tell them, well, it's funny. It's like, I tell it to myself still. So I, <laughs> Well, I hope, you know, this translate to others. I, mm -hmm. It's huge. What that thing you're worrying about, like, mm -hmm. I just promise you it's not worth it. Like, mm -hmm. let it be. Right, right. Yeah, I'm still trying to learn it. I'm a control freak. Like, I have mm -hmm. a problem with these things. And so I'm trying to just, you know what? Let it go. Let mm -hmm. it be. It is what it is. And that's that. It, it makes your life so much happier and easier and, and just... I don't know, like when you let go of things and you don't feel like you have to worry about them, because mm -hmm. that's another thing. It's not even just that you're worrying, it's that you feel like you have to worry. Right, right, yeah. Worried. Um, then you just, you cut yourself off from being, experiencing any type of joy and it goes mm -hmm. in spiral. So just that thing, that one thing that you think is the biggest thing in the world, 
you know what? It is not worth it. Go mm. live your life, let it go. What it's all gonna shake mm. out better than you hope so. Yeah, no, I love that right there. I love that. Just let it be. Let it be. <laughs> um, that's so awesome. Camille, um, really appreciate all the gems you gave us. Um, and I and it was cool just hearing about your journey. Um it, it, it's funny that you know, you kind of, not really funny, but it's interesting to me that you went from, you know, wanting to be a doctor mm -hmm. to being uh, head of women's basketball at SLAM. So it's like two, like, uh, two, totally two different fields. Yeah. So, so it's really cool. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Listen, life takes you anywhere. And, and, and luckily, life took me to meet you. So I'm excited to be here. And thank you so much for having me. Right. No, I really appreciate you. And everyone, um, if you like the episode, you know, share with the friend. If you don't like the episode, share with the friend because um, <laughs> they might like it. So uh, this is like the. That. This is another episode of Game Time Excellence, where we talk about your mission, mindset, mastery, and maintenance. Y'all have a blessed day. Please do not trade what you want most for what you want in the moment. Do not trade what you want most for what you want.